What's going on everyone? Thank you so much for watching. My name is Savannah and if you're new here, thank you so much for joining us today. I am super, super excited to bring this habitat to you uh, because the Southeast Asian Animal Pack uh, is releasing today. So it'll release in about an hour if you're watching this video right when it comes out about an hour from now. Um, and I'm excited to build for the sun bear. So we are in Socorro Zoo building for, like I just mentioned, the sun bear. I thought the sun bear would fit perfectly in Socorro Zoo because I kind of wanted to do like a very typical um, like sunken moat type habitat uh, like a very typical like old school zoo habitat really and Socorro is our zoo that's kind of an under budget uh, smaller zoo so I thought it would fit in really really well before we get too far into talking about this build I am excited to announce that I do have some DLC codes to give away so do hang tight stick with the video I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about how you might be able to win those towards the end but I do have a few codes so those of you that aren't able to pick this game up will have an opportunity to so I'm super excited about that and in addition, I want to thank the developers Frontier for giving me early access. I was so excited to get my hands on this pack and look at all the new animals, some of the new enrichment items that we got. And then of course, just the new animals and their animations are fantastic. I cannot wait to show you guys uh, the next episode of Tali Zoo where we get the clouded leopard in uh, because that is definitely by far my favorite. If you are brand, brand new to playing Planet Zoo and are not familiar with what the Southeast Asia pack is, uh, the Southeast Asia animal pack is actually being released with eight additional animals, seven habitat animals and one exhibit animal. So we're getting the sun bear, the binturong, the proboscis monkey, the Malayan tapir, the clouded leopard, the babarusa, the dole, and the Malayan leaf insect. So I do have a few habitat builds coming out in the next few days that I am super, super excited about because I um, was so excited to get my hands on these animals, like I said, and just look at all their animations and things. I think they did a really, really good job with them. Like I briefly mentioned, I was kind of basing this off of some reference pictures with this kind of circular habitat where there's a moat in between you and the animal, but the ground and the habitat is raised up a bit. So it kind of looks like the animal is on eye level. Um, this enclosure ended up being technically a bit too small for the sun bear um, but this is a sandbox zoo and I do have like the welfare and everything turned off so it was not that big of a deal um, but technically a little bit too small but it does satisfy their climbing needs because the sun bear is an arboreal species so they do need lots of climbing stuff to play around on. So starting off with the railing that goes around the whole outside of the exhibit using that rail that came with the aquatic pack and covering it with some climbable pieces with some bamboo and just making it kind of fit in. I, I wanted to have a little bit of a southeast kind of hint, I guess. So that's why I used some bamboo on this. You'll see I put some actual bamboo in the habitat, um, but I, I didn't want to go fully themed out. I wanted to make sure this still fit within the the style of Socorro Zoo um, without being like, like feeling out of place, kind of. You know, we could have used all the Southeast Asia pieces, gone really, really stylized with it. Um, and I'm kind of toying with doing that for another build. Let me know what you guys think. I, I kind of haven't used those pieces a lot before so I'm I'm kind of trying to decide if I want to actually go full out and do a fully stylized kind of East Asia enclosure um, but for Socorro Zoo that didn't really fit so I like I said I kind of just use hints here and there um, we do use some of the Southeast Asia wood pieces a little bit later on for some of the um, little pergola shade structure things that I end up making for the viewing areas but overall I wanted to to be just kind of a really naturalistic habitat. Um, like I said, just kind of an old school, what you would see. And I call it old school. It's not even that old school, to be honest. I just think
think of it as old school because I'm fortunate enough to live in the in San Diego and have the San Diego Zoo as my kind of benchmark. Um, so a lot of zoos still have habitats that look like this. And in fact, I forget where the one that I was looking at came from, but it was an actual zoo habitat. Um, but this kind of trick of, of separating the animals with the moat and um, raising them up onto the guests kind of eye level um, where the enclosure kind of slopes upward away from the guest kind of make sure that the animal is in view a lot of the times because as they get further away they kind of go up and that way they don't disappear over things and, and the guests get a good view at them. At the very top is like going to be a cave structure um, that serves as their hard shelter and they do go in there and sleep. Um, I will say in the end cinematics, I tried very hard to get good shots of the sun bear. I don't know if it's just the way that I end up doing their climbing structure in this habitat or their climbing animations altogether, but they seem a bit a bit confused on how to navigate some of the climbing structures that I make. And they, they are fairly simple um, climbing structures, so I don't know if it's something specific to the sun bear. I haven't played too much with the Binturong or the Clouded Leopard um, that will also have uh, um, climbing animations as well. So I don't know if it's something specific to the sun bear, um, but they did tend to kind of moonwalk and also kind of levi levitate at some points. Um, so like I said, I'm not quite sure if that's just a specific to me or specific to the sun bear in general. Um, but if you notice some funkiness going on in the end cinematics, that's why I tried to get mostly just uh, normal uh, behavior from them for that. Now, I feel like I just said this in the last build, right? Because the last build that came out was River Rock Zoo's uh, gray seal habitat. And I said there was a lot of rocks. This is a lot of rocks. <laughs> this one, the whole backdrop is is all rock work. It's all those flexi colored rocks. Um, I just, I was feeling the rocks today, really. So I just... Yeah, I just used a ton of them. So it kind of puts that other habitat to shame um, as far as the more rocks go. There are a ton of rocks in here. But just doing my normal thing, kind of layering them all over the place, making sure that the textures kind of line up so that they look right. Doing a little bit more terrain work in this exhibit than I normally have done in the past. So really liking that. Um, and then kind of altering some of the rock colors very slightly so that they do look fairly different. And then <laughs> I did end up changing this uh, shelter just a bit because as I was building, right now it looks fine, but at one point I kind of take a step back and I look at it and I was like, you know what? That looks like a guy with a face. It looks like a nose and two eyes and totally with the, the vertical rock going down in the center, like, look, doesn't that look like a face? <laughs> so I ended up changing it because it kind of bothered me. It kind of creeped me out a little bit. So I end up taking away one of those rocks and lowering the little cave uh, arches down a bit. And it ends up looking more like an actual cave and less like this creepy rock monster. Um, but that's what it reminded me of when I was building it. So I thought I would share that with you guys. Um, but yeah, so um, anyway, I just kind of wanted to talk about the sun bear as we normally do, right? Learn a little bit about them. So I have some information pulled up here. Um, and first and foremost, what I found interesting is that the, the sun bears are listed as vulnerable. However, because they do have a remote habitat, you know, being from um, uh, like Southern China and Eastern India, kind of in between that, that area, um, and because they have a quite shy personality, gathering conservation data and information on this species is rather difficult. However, scientists do anticipate or, or think rather that um, they are struggling somewhat in the wild more so than we might think they are um, just at first glance. This is mainly because their homelands are being lost rapidly to deforestation. Poachers hunt them mercilessly for body parts and fur, unfortunately, and some farmers actually do kill them on site because they often eat their crops, such as oil palm, 
um, coconuts and bananas. So it's pretty unfortunate that they're facing that, but those are the reasons why scientists think they might actually be doing a little bit worse in the wild than we actually think they are just because we are not able to get that um, accurate data on them or reliable data on them. But talking about them kind of overall, um, one of the most defining characteristics of the sun bear is their kind of crescent shaped pattern on their chest. And that's actually where they get their name. Um, legend says it actually represents the rising sun. And so that's kind of where they get their name, sun bear or Malayan sun bear. They have stocky muscular builds, small ears and a short muzzle, which earned them the nickname dog bear. And this is actually not something that I knew before kind of reading up on them is that they're kind of uh, referenced as being the dog bear. And now that I hear that, I can't kind of see it as they walk around. They do kind of sort of look like little dogs, um, but they are very, very, small. They only grow about half the size of an American black bear, um, with males being slightly larger than females. Um, they're only about five feet uh, long. So if they stand up on their hind legs, only about five feet tall, which is shorter than a lot of people. It's shorter than myself. I'm five foot eight. So it's kind of funny to me to imagine if I were to stand, you know, toe to toe with, uh, with a sun bear and it's standing up on its hind legs that I would be, I would be taller in, in some cases. So that's, that's a little bit weird <laughs> to think about. So yeah, I just find these guys really interesting. Um, so I did a little bit of reading, uh, to be quite honest, not as much as I would normally do for an animal when I'm releasing a video. I'm actually putting this together the night before. It's about 10 p.m. right now. And um, this video will go live, I think at like two or 3 a.m. my time. Um, so I'm not gonna get any sleep tonight. <laughs> if you don't hear from me for a couple days, it's because I've gone into uh, a napping coma and am catching up on all my sleep, but worth it. Cause I really did wanna get this out for you guys um, on the launch day so that you can kind of check out the sun bear itself. And there, I'm sure there'll be a bunch of other content creators putting things out with fantastic builds. Um, because as far as I'm aware, we're all pretty excited about this. So moving on, you can see that I have placed down some of the climbing structures in the habitat as of right now. I do end up placing down a little bit more, um, a couple platforms and things like that. I also place the new hammock, uh, the new enrichment item, the hammock in this enclosure, um, but they don't seem to actually use it. At least in this enclosure, they don't. Now checking the traversable area for the sun bear, they do have uh, access to it. They are able to climb up to it, but while I sat there and watched them for a little bit and admittedly I wasn't able to sit there and watch them forever um, I couldn't get them to go over to it I couldn't get them to use it so I, I do apologize that I don't have footage of them using that but I also placed down like this little foraging log uh, enrichment item that came with the pack as well um, and I did get to see them use that and it's a pretty cool animation you know it's just them foraging through these little holes in the logs I placed that right at the front of the habitat um, for people to see see them as they forage through, but uh, those are the only two new enrichment items that I do place down in this habitat. Um, they also added some scratching trees. There's like a, um, a temperate looking one and a tropical looking one, which look really great. They actually just look like the normal foliage, but um, I, and I haven't explored with it too much yet, but the animals will go up and uh, scratch on those trees, the ones that can use them, that is. So I thought that that was a pretty good addition to the game as far as enrichment items go. I can't wait to see animals use the hammock uh, because that's the one that was kind of teased in, I believe it was the clouded leopard photo that Frontier released. We could see in the back that there was this little uh, hammock piece. So that's pretty exciting. With this pack, we didn't get any new scenery items. So that will be um, something that you will notice as well. Everything I'm building with was already in the game. We did get some new signs. Um, so like some new species signs and things like that, which is awesome. Uh, but the main thing that I am super, super excited about, super excited about, is the fact that with the free update uh, that's releasing at the same time as the DLC, 
are billboards. So you'll see in a couple of my upcoming builds, I have taken the time to make some custom billboards, custom education signs that actually have written out education on them. So I'm super excited to start incorporating those into the zoos. Um, so let me know if there's anything uh, as far as cool ideas you wanna see done with the billboards or have any questions about them, how to use them, things like that. Um, if you do have questions, you guys can stop by uh, my stream when I'm streaming Planet Zoo and I'm happy to kind of go over that. I also want to figure out a way how to share those with you guys. So I'm still kind of brainstorming that in my head. Um, I think I might post a few of them on the Discord server. So if you're interested in that, the link is down below for you guys to join if you want to. Um, but some way to share those JPEG images with you. So that way, um, if you don't have Photoshop or just don't know what to create or how to create an educational sign, that you guys can, can can take those and put those in your zoo as well. So let me know again if that's something that you're interested in. I am happy to make those. Um, you know, they're just quick and easy uh, signs that I kind of put together in um, in Photoshop and I made a couple for the Malayan tapir already but plan to make some for lots of the animals and that way the signs in the game can actually have some English written out facts on them. So we are kind of nearing the end of the build. Um, we're gonna make this little shade structure here, uh, as I mentioned before, and it's just a very quick, simple, easy, you know, it's my very typical, lots of repetitive logs on top, uh, or panels of wood, whatever you wanna call them. So very easy, but um, just kind of some simple, simple guest coverings for the area, um, just to kind of decorate the space and, and have guests, you know, have a little bit of shade, I guess. Like I said, they're not really super super shade structures because they don't provide a whole lot of shade, but they just provide uh, a little bit more interest, a little bit more um, something to look at, patterns on the ground, everything I've said before. So just putting those together really quickly and then I duplicate that from this side to the other. And then I also just put some foliage behind them with that kind of rock border that you can see there that I've started on, um, just a little bit of a planter to, to bring a little bit of the foliage that's inside of the habitat to outside of the habitat. So it kind of makes it more more cohesive where the guests kind of feel like they're immersed in the environment of the sun bear. Um, so with that, there's not really anything else I have to say with the habitat. However, I do need to let you guys know how you can win the codes to the DLC. So I was actually fortunate enough to be given these codes by Frontier. So thank you so much for Frontier for letting me uh, hand these codes out. And I actually have five of them. So I'll be picking five individual winners and um, I will go ahead and send you over the, um, the the code via email. So what I need you to do is if you are interested in uh, winning one of these codes, please do leave a like on the video. Do make sure you're subscribed because only subscribed viewers will be able to be entered into the drawing. And then go ahead and leave me a comment down below with the keyword banana. If you guys don't know already, we kind of redid our channel memberships, which are now called the Banana Bunch. So you'll see some names at the very end of the video uh, and just kind of embracing the fact that Savannah rhymes with banana and making it a thing. So yeah, just go ahead. If all you want to do is leave a comment that simply says banana, uh, that's all you have to do. Um, I will pull all of those comments together and randomly draw those five winners to get the DLC code. And again, just super excited that I'm able to do that for you guys. And thank you again to Frontier for not only providing the early access for me to be able to put together this video for you, but providing those codes as well so that I can kind of share the love. You guys can get your hands on this and see the animals for yourself. So as we wrap up the build, again, thank you so, so much for watching. I am, I'm so excited with the growth of the channel and just the overwhelming support that I've gotten on, on here on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter, everywhere. Cause you guys, you guys are just phenomenal. Streaming's going extremely well. And I have kind of already decided to stream pretty much every Sunday because I'm having such a fun time with it. And that's all due to you guys coming, hanging out, chatting with me. So thank you so, so much. As we kind of finish up here, there's not too much more to do there's another like minute or so of speed build and then we get into the cinematics at the very end so please do let me know what you think again leave a comment down below with the keyword banana and i will draw five names to win those dlc codes and until next time i will talk at you later thanks guys bye